Clive Mund, copper is at a critical juncture and this has major implications for silver weary looking at copper. Because of its implications for the economy generally especially for the outlook for the price of silver by Clive Mund via Streetwise reports we have seen an unusually steady uptrend in copper this month that has resulted in it appreciating by about 10% which might not sound like much but makes a big difference if you are a producer with fixed costs. What is remarkable about this uptrend is not only that it came hard on the heels of a high volume smackdown. In the early days of the month that at the time looked bearish but that we have seen 16 days trading days in a row of higher closes as of the close of trading on Thursday. As can be seen on the 3 month chart for copper shown below. After doing some extensive research it has been discovered that the fundamental reason for this day after day seemingly interminable uptrend was that a prominent Chinese buyer, who has an old fashioned way of doing things, was walking over to the London Metals Exchange every day for weeks with his black briefcase in hand, and buying roughly the same amount of copper. But sadly, on Friday, he was run over by a London bus while on his way to the exchange and was thus unable to buy and the price dipped for the first time in long while. We will now zoom out to look at copper on its latest one year chart. On this chart we can see that while copper still has not broken down from its steep uptrend in force all this month it is getting very overbought on its MACD and RSI indicators and is quite a long way ahead of its 200 day moving average and these factors taken together with the now extreme cut structure and sentiment indicators that we will look at shortly suggest a high chance that it will going to reverse hero very soon and react back. Next we will look at copper s latest cut chart which since it also goes back a year can be directly compared to the one year copper chart above. As we can see large spec long positions are very close to their highs of the past year and when they have reached these sorts of levels in the past a reaction back by copper reaction has ensued and a reaction is made more likely given the factors that we have observed on copper s one year chart and the sentiment extremes that now exist that we will look at next. On the latest copper optics or optimism chart we can see that bullish sentiment towards copper is at the sort of wild extremes that we have only seen once before in the last 10 years and that coincided with the major top. This is not to say that it does this time but it would certainly seem to indicate a high probability that we are at or close to a significant intermediate medium term top. The long term chart for copper actually looks very bullish because the bull market that began in October 2016 has been driven by a record strong upside volume which has propelled both volume indicators to clear new highs. What this suggests is that, while the other factors that we have already looked at allied with the considerable resistance approaching the old peaks that we can delineate on this chart will probably force a reaction back soon. The longer term outlook remains favorable with a high probability that copper will eventually proceed to break out to new all time highs, i.e get above even its 2011 peak in the $4.60 area. If that happens its rate of rise can of course be expected to accelerate. While a detailed look at the copper price technicals may seem like a waste of time to some of you, given all the other subject matter for such analysis, it is important to keep in mind that we are not looking at copper for its own sake. We are looking at it because of its implications for the economy generally and especially because of its implications for the outlook for the prices of other metals, especially silver. What we are seeing on these copper charts 
principally its long-term chart, bodes very well indeed for the future trend of silver prices. Clive Mund has been president of www.clivemund.com, a successful resource sector website, since its inception in 2003. He has 30 years experience in technical analysis and has worked for banks, commodity brokers and stock brokers in the City of London. He holds a diploma in technical analysis from the UK Society of Technical Analysts. World Silver Production 3 Charts You Want to See Anywhere Else The rate at which global silver production increased over the past century is quite astonishing. When Columbus arrived in America, 1492, the world was only producing 7 million ounces of silver a year. Today, the world's largest primary silver mine, Fresnillo S. Salicto Mine, produced three times that amount in just one year, 22 million ounces, 2016. Yes, we have come a long way in 500 years. Just think about that for a minute. One silver mine last year produced three times the global amount in 1493. According to the U.S. Bureau of Mines 1930 report on summarized data of silver production, the average annual silver production in the world from 1493 to 1600 was 6 6.9 million ounces, Maz. If we look at the following chart, we can see how world silver production increased over the past 500 plus years. As we can see, average annual world silver production increased from 6.9 mas during 1493 to 1600 to 13 mas from 1600 to 1700, 18 mas from 1700 to 1800, 51 mas from 1800 to 1900, 274 mas from 1900 to 2000 and a stunning 722 mas from 2000 to 2017. Again, these figures represent the average annual silver production for each time period. In the current period, 2000 to 2017, the world has produced 103 times more silver per year, and from 1493 to 1600. However, the next chart shows the total silver production for each period. From 1493 to 1600, the world produced a total of 747 mas of silver, compared to 13,000 mas, 13 billion ounces, in just 18 years from 2000 to 2017. Now, the reason the last silver bar on the right of the chart is lower than the previous one has to do with comparing 18 years worth of silver production, 2000 to 2017, versus 50 years, 1950 to 2000. It took 50 years to produce 17,061 mas, during 1950 to 2000, versus 13,000 mas, in the 18 years from 2000 to 2017. If we compare world silver production from the different periods, here is the result, percentage of world silver production, 1493 to 2017, 2000 to 2017 equals 26.4%, 1950 to 2017 equals 61%, 1900 to 2017 equals 82%, while a little more than a quarter of all world silver production, 1493 to 2017, was produced in the past 18 years. 82% were produced since 1900. That is a lot of silver. It turns out that 40.4 billion ounces was produced from 1900 to 2017, out of the total 49.3 billion ounces produced since 1493. Interestingly, more than half of that silver was consumed in industrial silver applications. 
I will be writing more about that in future articles. The last chart I find quite interesting. If we go back a little more than a century, the United States was the largest silver producer in the world. In 1915, the U.S. produced 75 mas of silver out of the total 189 mas mined in the world that year, thus, in 1915, the U.S. produced 40% of all world silver production. Mexico came in second in 1915, by producing 39.3 mas. However, U.S. silver production in 2017 will only be 34 mas versus the estimated 870 mas globally. Thus, U.S. silver production only accounts for 4% of world mine supply versus 40% back in 1915. What a change in 100 years! Lastly, the U.S. imports approximately 22% of world mine production each year. That is 193 mas, of the total late 170 mas, in 2017. While domestic mine supply is only 34 mas, the United States has to import more than a fifth of global mine production to meet its silver market demand. of trading on Thursday, as can be seen on the three-month chart for copper shown below. After doing some extensive research it has been discovered that the fundamental reason for this day after day seemingly interminable uptrend was that a prominent Chinese buyer, who has an old-fashioned way of doing things, was walking over to the London Metals Exchange every day for weeks with his black briefcase in hand and buying roughly the same amount of copper. But sadly, on Friday, he was run over by a London bus while on his way to the exchange, and was thus unable to buy and the price dipped for the first time in a long while. We will now zoom out to look at copper on its latest one-year chart. On this chart we can see that, while copper still has not broken down given the factors that we have observed on copper's one-year chart and the sentiment extremes that now exist that we will look at next. On the latest copper optics or optimism chart, we can see that bullish sentiment towards copper is at the sort of wild extremes that we have only seen once before in the last 10 years and that coincided with the major top. This is not to say that it does this time, but it would certainly seem to indicate a high probability that we are at or close to a significant intermediate, medium-term, top. The long-term chart for copper actually looks very bullish because the bull market that began in October 2016 has been driven by a record strong upside volume which has propelled both volume indicators to clear new highs. What this suggests is that, while the other factors that we have already looked at, allied with the considerable resistance approaching the old peaks that we can delineate on this chart, will probably force a reaction back soon. The longer term outlook remains favorable, with a high probability that copper will eventually proceed to break out to new all-time highs, i.e., get above even its 2011 peak in the $4.60 area. If that happens its rate of rise can of course be expected to accelerate. While a detailed look at the copper price technicals may seem like a waste of time to some of you, given all the other subject matter for such analysis, it is important to keep in mind that we are not looking at copper for its own sake. We are looking at it because of Clive Mund, copper is at a critical juncture and this has major implications for silver weary looking at copper.
because of its implications for the economy generally especially for the outlook for the price of silver by Clive Munn via streetwise reports we have seen an unusually steady uptrend in copper this month, that has resulted in it appreciating by about 10%, which might not sound like much, but makes a big difference, if you are a producer with fixed costs. What is remarkable about this uptrend is not only that it came hard on the heels of a high volume smackdown. In the early days of the month, that at the time looked bearish, but that we have seen 16 days trading days, in a row of higher closes, as of the close from its steep uptrend in force all this month, it is getting very overbought on its MACD, and RSI indicators and is quite a long way ahead of its 200-day moving average, and these factors, taken together with the now extreme cut structure and sentiment indicators, that we will look at shortly, suggest a high chance that it will going to reverse hero very soon, and react back. Next we will look at Copper S latest cut chart, which, since it also goes back a year can be directly compared to the one-year copper chart, above. As we can see, large spec long positions are very close to their highs of the past year, and when they have reached these sorts of levels, in the past, a reaction back by copper reaction has ensued, and a reaction is made more likely 